Hello everyone this is part 17 of what if Naruto was Iron Man, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. When Riku and the Sandime got to the Hockage office the Sandime said, why have you come here with such hostilities toward my village? Riku said, I originally didn't but when I saw the way the people of this village treat Naruto I am sickened. I refuse to have my godson live like he has another day. The Sandime said, I see, so how do you know Minato and Kushina? Riku said, I came to Kanoa when my sister told me she was pregnant with her daughter Tenten. I believe she said she was on Team Guy. The Sandime said, yes she is. So your brother-in-law is Peter. Riku said, nice try. His name's Dustin. The Sandime sighed and said, I'm sorry about that but you have to understand that you have placed me at a huge disadvantage. Riku said, I know which is why I wasn't insulted that you tried to catch me in a lie. Now as I was saying I originally came to Kanoa to congratulate my sister and I met Minato when I was asking for directions to where they lived. At that time they had a house on the east side of town and only a small store. Kushina and my sister met when they were going to the hospital for checkups. I went along with her to one which is when I first met Kushina who we invited over for some tea and we became friends from there. She loved honey tea with a lemon in it. The Sandime thought, she really did know Kushina, and said, I see. So where have you been all these years? Riku said, I was an inventor of sorts. I created all kinds of things from radios to chakra based weapons and anything in the middle. I just didn't have a lot of money at the time since I had to run when Snow Country was taken over. I originally worked for the King of Snow Country before his brother killed him. Anyways when I was here Minato and Kushina eventually let me in on the secret they were together along with Dustin and my sister. Kushina asked me to be godmother and her and my sister came up with all kinds of plans for the future of their kids. I wish they could have been here to see how they grown, as she looked sad. The Sandime said, as do I. I mean Kushina. I never had the pleasure to meet your sister. Riku said, yeah, she died from childbirth like Kushina did. I had went on a business trip to try and market one of my inventions two weeks before the QB attack and when I heard about it and all the deaths I came back to Kanoa and I couldn't find Dustin and Tenton. Dustin told me they were at an emergency shelter in another town at the time and I went to where Minato and Kushina lived and their house was destroyed so I thought that Naruto and Kushina was dead along with Minato so I left thinking everyone I knew was dead. I used the money I made from my invention to buy a ship and I sailed away from the elemental nations and didn't return until last year. The Sandime said, you actually sailed out into the distant lands. Riku said, yeah. I had knowledge of a route from my time working for the King of Snow Country since we got some special metal from there. It takes about four months at sea to get to land. The Sandime said, I see, so how did you find out about your family and Naruto? Riku smiled and said, I was in Lightning Country when Dustin came to meet a supplier of steel and we ran into each other about seven months back. He told me about Tenten and also about Naruto since he knew who he was when he saw him when you took him to get supplies to become a ninja. That was why he offered Naruto a chance to come back to shop there but he never did. The Sandime nods sadly and said, so if you didn't come here for hostile reasons what were you planning to do when you got here? Riku said, well I know some skills I wish to pass on to Tenten and Naruto. I was going to train them and I was going to open up shop here since I've grown from an inventor to a very good businesswoman. In fact I recently set up a trade alliance with Wave Country after helping to liberate them from the Gato Shipping Corporation when I took over his business though I will have to clean up some of his business. I was wanting to open a couple of business here in town, a restaurant, grocery store, jutsu shop, furniture store, and a few other things like that. The Sandime blinked and said, Jutsu shop, what's that? Riku said, oh, it's a little something I saw while in the other lands. You have people who are retired or injured and can't be a ninja any longer in your village correct? The Sandime nod and Riku said, and when they die all that knowledge of Taijutsu, Genjutsu, Ninjutsu, Kenjutsu, Medical Jutsu, and Forbidden Jutsu will be lost. A jutsu shop is where those who are retired or injured have a chance to get extra money to support themselves since they can't be ninja anymore by writing down a jutsu like say chakra strings. 
It's AD rank jutsu. I would pay $2,500 for AD rank jutsu to them for it and then I have the right to mass sell it to any ninja of your village who would want to come in and buy it at say $500 so all I have to do is sell the same jutsu to 6 people and I make a profit. E rank jutsu are $250 each, D rank are $500, C rank are $1,000, B rank are $2,000, A rank are $5,000, and S rank are $10,000. Someone like that copycat Kakashi could make an easy $500 million selling all his jutsu. The Sandime said, I won't allow such a shop to operate in my village. Riku said, oh, and how would you stop me from opening that shop? The Sandime said, you have to have permission from the council to open any business and I can order my ninja not to do business with you. Riku smiled and said, then under article 65 paragraph 9 of the village charter you are breaking the village laws and can be removed from office if I bring this matter to the fire lord. The Sandime frowned and asked, what do you mean? As he tried to think of what she was referring to. Riku said, in order for the Uchiha police force to be allowed to use their Sharingan in the village for the protection of the village they would have to list any jutsu they copied while the Sharingan was active and pay the person they copied the jutsu from a monetary sum of what the jutsu was worth. Any Uchiha who did not do that was punishable by removal of their office, or death. My jutsu shop would be considered an active Sharingan in the eyes of the Fire Lord and since I will only sell the jutsu to your ninja that means that I am doing it to protect the village. The Sandime said, that is for your own records, what right do you have to sell them then? Riku said, the right of a teacher teaching a student. I am offering to teach a trade like a blacksmith or a seamstress would teach someone who wanted to learn it. You can't stop me there either unless you want to shut down all skilled jobs in Kanoa. The Sandime slumped in his chair as he thought it over and said, I see your point. Just then there was four swirls of leaves and the Sandime saw it was the four Anbu and he blinked and asked, what happened to your arm Tora? Tora said, I entered a grocery store and was attacked with a baseball bat before I made three steps and never said a word. The Sandime frowned and said, is it broke? Tora said, no, I was able to reinforce it with chakra but it hurts like hell. The Sandime face went neutral and said, report. Inu said, I tried going into 17 different buildings and the ones I was allowed into I was charged inflated rates. Heavy said, besides the ramen stand I wasn't allowed anywhere past the front door without being screamed at or having others block me. The Sandime frowned and Riku asked, what did you find Neko? Neko said, I tried entering public places that I thought Naruto should be allowed like the library, ninja supply stores, and the academy besides the wolf claw weapon shop I couldn't find any stores that would treat me right and I was asked to leave the library when I walked in but the woman who asked me appeared she didn't want to in the academy. Well, Mizuki a traitor sir, he pulled me to the side and offered me a chance to pass early if I could complete a special mission. He told me the combination to the secure room in your office here and told me to steal the forbidden scroll. He said that I would not be allowed to graduate because of all my absentees. The Sandime looked at Riku and said, can you give me some time to figure this out? I have completed your mission. Riku said, yes and I will talk with Naruto and find out if he wants me to tax Kanoa. Here is the payment I promised. Good day, as she tossed a scroll and left in a swirl of water. After she was gone the Sandime said, go get your arm checked just in case Tora. The rest of you notify the council I want to meet them in 30 minutes. Inu, I want you to capture Mizuki and take him to Ibiki. Go. And all four left in swirls of leaves. At the academy Naruto and Aruka entered the classroom and the class quieted down and Ino said, how did you change cloths so fast Naruto? Naruto looked confused and said, I've been wearing these cloths for several hours Ino, why? Sakura said, but you were here five minutes ago and Mizuki sensei took you out in the hall to talk to you and you were wearing your orange outfit. Aruka sighed and said, that was an Anbu agent Sakura. Naruto godmother has recently returned to Kanoa and requested a mission when she saw someone attacking Naruto and hired an Anbu team to impersonate Naruto around the village looking for the guilty party. That's part of the reason he wasn't here today. At this Mizuki flinched and began to look around when Inu appeared and said, Mizuki, you are hereby under arrest for treason. As he went to capture Mizuki who jumped back and began to do hand signs and said, fire style fireball jutsu, as he breathed a fireball at Inu who jumped to the side and Naruto seeing the fireball heading toward the kids replaced himself with one of the kids and held both his hands in front of him and screamed, Raisin Shuriken, 
as both hands formed a raisin shuriken that intercepted the fireball. When the attack died Naruto still had the raisin shuriken. Going and Mizuki said, I'll kill you demon as he pulled. A demon windmill shuriken off his back and threw it. At Naruto who spun in a circle real quick throwing. Both raisin shuriken and it cut the demon windmill shuriken in half and continued on their paths slicing both Mizuki arms off making him scream in pain and Naruto acting on instinct grabbed both pieces of the demon windmill shuriken that had been cut in half and spun again throwing them at Mizuki pinning him to the wall as one point each went into the wall while the other point that was at a 90 degree angle pinned his chest to the walls and Naruto who was panting said, if I really was a demon, you would be dead traitor, as he fell back into his chair. The entire class was shocked by this as was Aruka and Inu as Mizuki who was getting pale from his bleeding stumps passed out. Inu said, what was all that Naruto? Naruto said, later, if you want to arrest Mizuki you need to get him to a medic before he bleeds to death. Inu looked and said, right, Aruka, can you clean this up? Aruka nods and Inu placed his hand on Mizuki chest and shushing away. Aruka quickly did a few hand signs and breathed a small fire at the blood and the severed arms. Aruka glanced back at the class that was all looking at Naruto in shock and Aruka said, Good job Naruto, you saved a classmate's life by replacing him with yourself and stopping the fireball but what was that jutsu you used? Naruto sighed and said, I've been trying to learn my dad's jutsu, you know, the one my godmother used in the tower today. Aruka nods and Naruto said, Well while learning it I invented the jutsu I just used. I'm still working on it but it's not complete yet. Aruka said, well it was still impressive. Just then there was a swirl of water on one side of the room and a swirl of leaves on the other showing the sand diamond Riku. Riku quickly moved over to Naruto and said, are you alright? Naruto said, yeah, I put too much chakra in it though. Riku hit him on the head and said, idiot. I told you not to use that jutsu for a week or two until you got it under control better. Naruto said, well sorry. I don't have anything else that could have stopped that jutsu. If I had a water source nearby or could control my bloodline better then maybe I could have stopped it but. Riku covered his mouth with her hand and said, you talk too much. The Sandime asked, how exactly did you know what happened here already Riku-san? Riku said, I already found out that Naruto will train even to the point of exhaustion and since the jutsu he invented is an A-rank assassination jutsu I made him wear an alarm that goes off and notifies me that he used that jutsu. I told him I didn't want him using it without me there in case he hurts himself until he can control it and the Raisingen. The Sandime said, you shouldn't be teaching him the Raisingen. It is also an A-rank assassination jutsu. Riku said, his father, the Yondaim invented it and it is his birthright to learn it just like these students who are from clans have a right to learn their family jutsu. There were several gasps in the room and Kiba said, he's the Yondaim's son. Sakura said, now that I look at him, besides those whiskers he does look like the Yondaim. Ino said, wait, if he's the Yondaim's son then why is he named Uzumaki? A random kid asked, why did Mizuki call him a demon? The Sandime said, enough, silencing the room. Riku said, perhaps you should let me explain it for you Hokage Sama. I am sure that you have more important things to do than explain to a bunch of kids that they have been lied to their entire lives because of your law. The Sandime glared at her and said, you are troublesome, causing Shikamaru to sneeze as the Sandime left in a swirl of leaves. After he was gone Riku smiled and said, hi Ruka, how's it going? Causing the entire room to face faulted. Naruto thought, I think your programming went to hell Riku, causing her to hit him upside the head. Aruka sat down and said, well, dot you got the floor Riku-san. Why don't you explain things? Riku nods and looked around the room and pointed to Kiba and said, you, you with the dog, come here a minute. Kiba frowned and asked, why? Riku said, because if you help me I will pay you $100 and all you have to do is stand there and act brave in front of all the cute girls in your class. Kiba smirked and walked down to Riku was and Riku reached for a Kamaru and Kiba stepped back and Riku said, I need his help also so I will give you another $100 to get him a big stake if he will help me also. Aruka blinked and asked, what are you going to do exactly Riku-san? Riku said, shush you. I'm teaching here, causing the class to giggle and Kiba said, you're not going to hurt him are you? Riku said, nope, he's going to be perfectly fine. Trust me. Kiba nods and set a Kamaru on the desk and Riku said, alright class, 
here is the big secret that all of you have been lied to all your lives about. You see how, what are both your names? Kiba blushed and said, I'm Kiba and this is Akamaru. Riku said, right, all right you all see how Akamaru and Kiba are two separate beings right? At this everyone nods and Riku said, let me see your hand a minute Kiba. Kiba held out his hand and Riku pulled out a scroll and unsealed a paintbrush and Inka Naruka said, you're not actually going to do that are you? Riku said, relax, I know what I'm doing. As she drew a seal on Kiba's hand. Kiba asked, what is this? Riku said, a storage seal. Now I want you to place that hand on Akamaru like you're going to pet him and send a small chakra burst to your hand. Kiba did while frowning and Akamaru disappeared in a puff of smoke shocking everyone but Naruto, Riku, and Aruka. Kiba said, where did he go? Aruka said, he's in the seal on your hand now Kiba. Kiba looked at his hand and said, how do I get him out? Riku said, relax, I will explain it to you and everyone in a minute. Now I want to ask you all something. When Kiba sealed Akamaru in his hand did Kiba become Akamaru or did Akamaru become Kiba? Sakura said, of course not, it's like a glass of water, the glass doesn't become the water and the water doesn't become the glass, right? Riku asked, does everyone agree with Sakura? Ino said, of course we do, what does this have to do with anything? Naruto said, because I found out when my godmother arrived recently the reason nearly everyone in the village hates me is because my dad, the Yondime, the day I was born sealed something in me just like Kiba sealed Akamaru but the people of this village see me as the thing that is sealed in me even though we are separate. It's the reason I was kicked out of the orphanage at the age of four, it's the reason council members told my family I died the day I was born so they would not let me grow up in another country and it's the reason I can't even go to the library without being asked to leave. Sakura mom got told when she was hired to work there if she let me enter the library she would be fired. Can anyone guess what it was that my dad sealed in me, making Sakura think to ask her mom. Ino asked, when is your birthday? as everyone tried to think about what Naruto said. Naruto turned and slammed his head in the wall and said, thanks. I see how I rate to everyone. Riku, can we please go? Riku nod pulling out $200 and said, just wipe some of your blood on the seal and he will pop out. As she hands the money to Kiba who unsealed Akamaru and she walked over to Naruto and placed her hand on his shoulder and shushing away in a swirl of water. Once they were gone Ino asked, well what is it? What did the Yondime seal in his son the day he was born? Aruka sighed and said, QB, making all the kids' eyes widen. Am said, he's the QB. Aruka quickly unleashed a lot of ki and said, he is not the QB. He is no different than Kiba and Akamaru a few minutes ago. Akamaru was to represent QB and Kiba represented Naruto. Besides those whiskers on Naruto face marking him as a Jinchuriki he has never shown any signs of being anything but a normal person. A single clap from the back of the room drew his attention and Aruka's eyes widened as he saw the height of the person in the back of the room and he said, who are you and why are you here Kumonin, as he pulled out a kunai. The person standing there said, relax Chunin. The rakage asked me to come meet Naruto and find out where he lived since his uncle the feudal lord is on his way here with the rakage. I was told he was the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi and I had Nibi lead me to him, causing several eyes to widen. Shikamaru said, you're a Jinchuriki also. The person laughed and pulled off the cloak revealing that the person was a woman and she said, my name is Niyugito, Jinchuriki of the Nibi no Neko and just so you should know nearly all of the Biju are sealed into a human somewhere. My village has two, Suna has one Iwa has two, Mist has one and you have one but unlike you every other village has raised us to be superior weapons. Hell, last time I checked the Mizukij was in fact the Jinchuriki of the Sanbi. Ino said, what's it like being a jink, whatever you call it. Yugito laughed and said, want to know a little secret girl, you see that girl right there, the Huga. Hanata stiffened and Ino said, Hanata, yeah, what about her? Yugito said, when a Jinchuriki has a child that child is born with a bloodline. The Huga bloodline was created when a Jinchuriki of the Nibi no Neko in the past had a child. Kumo waiting to see if when I settle down if my children will have the Hugo bloodline or perhaps a new one, with a smirk making Hanata pale and the rest of the class wide-eyed. Kiba growled and said, you lie. Yugito said, nope, in fact your bloodline comes from a minor dog demon. The Sharingan comes from a lizard demon. Naruto bloodline like most water bloodlines came from the Sanbi. 
If he didn't already have a bloodline it would be pretty interesting to see what bloodline Naruto children have since nobody ever been smart enough to seal the QB away before but then again your Yondime was rumored to be the best seal master in the world but if what Naruto said is true about the way your village treated him then your people must be idiots. Anyways you shouldn't throw stones in a glass house because the house you break might be your own. As she glanced to the left and nods slightly before she shushing away in a bolt of lightning. Once she was gone Am asked, she's lying, right Aruka sensei. Aruka said, I don't know Am. It is possible and people have captured demons several times over the years so it is possible that is how bloodlines are created. Aruka sighed and said, alright, I want the truth, how many of you think Naruto is the QB? Three people raised their hands and Aruka frowned and said, well you three are wrong. If the Yondime didn't seal the QB in Naruto to save our village then we would all be dead. Anyone who says he is the QB or hates him for it are idiots. Sakura asked, what happens if the QB breaks free of the seal he's in? A voice from the back of the room said, it won't making everyone turn and see the Sandime Hockage sitting in a desk. Sakura asked, when did you get back here? The Sandime said, I created a Kajbunshin and had it sit back here to watch. I saw the Kumo Nin the moment she arrived and I gave her Naruto address. Also she was telling the truth. My sensei the Shodime Hokage said that he got his bloodline to use wood because his mother was a Jinchuriki for the Shichibi. Also everything Naruto, Riku, and Aruka said is true. The people of this village because of the all the deaths the QB caused before he was sealed away hate Naruto because they feel that it's not fair the QB still lives when their loved ones died. As long as Naruto lives the QB lives but the day Naruto dies he will successfully kill the QB. Choji said, if the QB dies when Naruto dies why does it sound like their demons have been sealed several times? The Sandime said, because the Yondime, Naruto father created a brand new sealing method that summoned the Shinigami at the cost of his life to seal the QB into Naruto so when Naruto dies the QB will go to the afterlife. Of course Minato also made it where Naruto is slowly torturing and killing the QB as well. Sakura asked, what do you mean? The Sandime said, I know you all have heard how this is Naruto third year taking the final test right. Ino said, yeah, he's an idiot who can't pass it. The Sandime said, actually, he's passed it both times except for one jutsu. That one jutsu has stopped him and because the way Naruto is slowly killing the QB, he can't do that one jutsu because he has too much chakra. In fact Naruto has more chakra than I do because he is taking the chakra from the QB and making it his own so by the time Naruto is I say 22 years old he should have killed the QB and will have more chakra than the entire village put together. At this the entire class was wide-eyed including Aruka. The Sandime chuckled and said, after I saw the pain. The older generation of Kanoa had because of seeing all their loved ones die at the hands of the QB I had passed a law that no one was allowed to speak about how it was really defeated hoping that Naruto would be able to live a normal life since it was him who is the one saving us every day but most of the older generation do not see him as a person but instead QB and have gotten around my law by ordering the younger generation to stay away or try to make his life hell. Think about how many times adults have told you to stay away from him or something like that. Now imagine if you heard those words every day of your life. Then you might have an idea of what Naruto life is like. Dot but the funny thing is, after everything he's been through, he doesn't want pity. Or revenge, or even a reward. Dot all he wants to be seen as is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, proud shinobi of Kanoa and to someday be a husband and father. Well my old bones are getting tired of sitting here. Please think over my words and show me and everyone that the younger generation is smarter than the last and that you can tell the difference between a kunai in a scroll and the scroll itself. Goodbye future shinobi and kunoiki of Kanoa and good luck, as he went up in smoke. To say everyone was subbed you would be an understatement. As the class looked at each other Shikamaru said, I don't care if he's got the QB in him or not. Naruto is Naruto, the same person he was yesterday and the same person he will be tomorrow. Are we done for today Aruka sensei? Today has been troublesome. Aruka smiled and said, yes, you're all dismissed. With Naruto. Naruto was in his apartment meditating on drawing the cold in his fingers and toes toward the warmer parts of his body so he could control his bloodline when a bolt of lightning appeared in his room and he tensed a moment as Riku said, relax, I was expecting her. Hello Yugito. Yugito said, you know you did a very good impression of the hockage back there. If it wasn't for the fact I can smell the same scent from you even I would have been fooled. 
Naruto asked, what is she talking about Riku? Looking at both women and trying to figure out why Akumo Nin was here. Riku said, relax, I will tell you later. This is Ni Yugito, Jinchuriki of the Nibi no Neko. She was sent here to find you. Yugito turned toward Naruto and said, the rakage sent me ahead to save time and ask you to open this scroll. If you can't then you're not related to the feudal lord of lightning country but if you can then you are. It is just a safety measure to protect our lord. Naruto nods and took the scroll and bit his thumb recognizing the seal as a blood seal and put some blood on it. As the scroll opened he opened it and read the words, hello nephew, and he handed the scroll back to her and Yugito said, thank you. I shall return now and show that you are related to him, don't let the idiots get to you kid, some of us understand what you're going through and with time it can get better, as she left in another bolt of lightning. Naruto turned to Riku and said, so what was that about back there that you had me reveal my status as a Jinchuriki of the QB4? Riku said, one of the upgrades that I sent to Eva is a way to make your own summoning contract basically with QB feed kajbunchons that look like QBs. Not to mention the fact your chakra saber and other weapons will be made out of QB chakra as well and you won't have to worry about the chakra drain. Naruto said, that reminds me, how exactly are you going without me or someone inside that armor? Riku sighed and said, in the future we came up with a way to generate more chakra by changing chakra into electricity and then running it through a generator and then changing the increased electricity back into chakra and then repeating the process. When we found this you had me create the seals on the inside of this armor and store it in a new and improved remote ball so that as time went by I would gain unlimited chakra. Originally I was taking 1% of your chakra constantly to do this but when the QB was being extracted from you I took as much of QB chakra as I could while using it to turn your body into a bomb to kill a Katasuki to make sure they didn't go after Gara and the others. That was one of your final request. Naruto said, so you have QB chakra. Riku said, originally but then over the next month I created a new set of armor called War Machine as well as purifying the chakra I took from QB and gave War Machine enough chakra to power it for 7 days without ever touching Tenton's reserves but like you it is constantly taking 1% of her chakra so that she will get stronger but it won't cost her too much chakra to use it and while she's resting it will restore itself. I also used the power transfer system I explained earlier to make Tenton a chakra saber, chakra scythe and a chakra shield so that using those won't ever draw on her own reserves. I have told Eva how to do the same for your weapon systems but told her to modify them to QB chakra. Naruto said, why can't you just make it where we have unlimited chakra like you? Riku shook her head and said, too dangerous. It could accidentally cause chakra overload and kill you or turn you into a chakra bomb and kill you. I have sent instructions to Eva to make it where most of your operating systems will be used with QB chakra so you won't have as much of a drain as you had before but 1% will still be drawn from you constantly to help improve you as well as storing up chakra for later use. This will help you with your reserves and make sure when you get older and absorb more of QB chakra you don't die of chakra overload. Naruto thought a moment and said, alright, I can understand that. Dot and you used the same idea for Tenton since she doesn't have the QB you gave her a way to power hers while only slightly making her notice using it. Riku said, right. Right now only me, Eva, and Mom know how to make the unlimited chakra reserves and that will be the way it remains. When you or Tenton die then Mom and Eva will be uploaded into me and I will pass that knowledge on to your children and their children and so on and so forth which is why I won't fight for you unless it is a last resort because I am to be the guardian of the Namika's clan secrets just like we had discussed. Naruto frowned and said, I see, well that's alright and I admit it's a good thing you didn't give us unlimited chakra because we might become reckless with it. Riku smiled and rubbed Naruto head and said, anyways you should get some rest, Go take a shower and I'll get you some food and cook you a meal. It is already 7 o'clock in the evening and you have had a very long day. Naruto asked, when can I see Tenton? Riku said, tomorrow after you pass your test. Naruto nods and went toward the bathroom and when he came out had a nice meal ready for him to eat and after dinner went to bed. After he was asleep Riku thought, and tomorrow the real fun begins. I just hope you are ready for it Naruto-kun because you only going to get this one chance. I can't risk going back again. In the council chamber the Sandime said, so we are all in agreement. The council looked at the three bodies on the ground and quickly agreed and the Sandime said, good, then begin immediately. Dismissed. Anbu, take the bodies of Koharu, Homaru, and Danzo away. 
As the Anbu took the bodies away and the Sandime thought, idiots. To think that Danzo would attack me from behind when I ordered Homaru and Koharu arrested after finding out that they sent that message knowing he was Naruto uncle. They should have remained silent and Hyashi wouldn't have killed those two. I can't believe how strong he is considering his family Taijutsu is called the gentle fist. Luckily I was able to let go in time to avoid that sword. I knew I should have killed you years ago Danzo, to think you would try to assassinate me when I was stopping Hyashi from destroying their bodies, as he looked at the cut along his arm before he shushined away to the hospital. The next day when Naruto got up he found a new pair of black Anbu pants, black combat boots, and a black modified chunin, Anbu style armor vest with multiple pockets and the Uzumaki spiral on the left pocket. He then looked at his black cloak with blue flames and saw it had been cleaned and repaired and smiled as he got dressed. Once he got dressed he left his apartment and headed toward the academy and blinked as he saw several store owners smile toward him and he thought, something's up and those smiles are fake, as he ignored most of them and kept on walking. When he got to the academy he saw everyone was going in and he quickly walked inside through a side door that is used to go to the training ground. In the front of the academy several people frowned as they saw this. Hyashi looked to the tree in front of the academy and nods and he saw a branch member nod as well and he said, have Anbu discovered who impersonated you yesterday during our council meeting Hokage Sama? The Sandime said, no but they have not found any evidence of that Kumo Nin either though I believed that she was here. I believe the point Riku-san had Naruto make yesterday is true. Our security has slipped greatly to not see an academy student painting the Hokage monument in broad daylight and the fact he outran most of our ninja as well does not give me much confidence in our ninja abilities. Perhaps the years of peace have made us soft, as he glanced at the academy window where Aruka class was. Hyashi said, yes, I am waiting for the fallout of the truth behind bloodlines coming out like it did. The Sandime nod and said, for now all we can do is try and make things calm between now and the time the feudal lord arrives, as they walked away. Inside the classroom Naruto took a seat in the back of the class with a glass of water in front of him with his hands on each side of the glass three inches away and several genins walked in and looked at him and looked at the other kids and then back at Naruto and Naruto who was concentrating on the water in front of him saw this but kept it to himself. Just then Shikamaru walked in seeing the other kids and muttered, troublesome, and headed up the steps and sat down next to Naruto and said, what's up? Naruto said, nothing much, just working on my bloodline. What's up with you? Shikamaru said, just wondering if you think you're going to pass this time or not. Naruto said, yeah, my godmother taught me a couple of chakra control exercises and a couple other things that helped me with my bunshin problem. Shikamaru said, notice the looks. Naruto said, yeah, what's up with them? Shino voice from behind him said, now that they know the truth about you they're trying to figure out what to think. Welcome to my world. Naruto said, you're not that bad Shino. I figured you, Shika, and Shoji would be cool about this crap. I still can't believe it all, it's so, unreal and yet. Shikamaru said, troublesome. Naruto said, very, by the way Shino, you don't have any one me right now do you? Shino said, no why? Naruto said, didn't want to accidentally kill them. Ice style, ice block. As he flashed through hand signs and the glass in front of him began to freeze but only at the top of the water froze. Shino raised an eyebrow and Naruto sighed and said, not enough. I need more control. Shikamaru said, ice. Naruto said, yeah, it's my bloodline. It's hard work getting it to work though. Shino sat down and said, what do you mean? Naruto said, well the first time I activated it. Well I rather not talk about but from what I've been told I have to move the coldness in my body toward my core. When I feel the elements in my body I can feel fire in my stomach thanks to the fox and I can feel wind chakra going completely through my system since wind aids fire and turns water to ice and near my fingers and toes I can feel coldness. That is where my second element comes in of water and as I move the coldness toward my core it will turn the water into ice and if I can get it all the way to my core I might actually be able to kill the QB chakra in me but that's just a theory. I'm having to do a lot of theory work from a third person point of view to figure out how to use my bloodline, hopefully my uncle will be able to help me learn to use it better. Both Shikamaru and Shino nod and Choji walked up and said, hey Naruto, excited about today. Naruto said, some. I think I'm still in shock a little though. Choji said, 
Hey, you're always Naruto to me after all no bad person enjoys Ichiruka ramen. Naruto smiled and said, thanks Choji, we should hang out some time. Dot all four of us. Kiba said, mind if I join in. Naruto blinked and said, you're okay with me. Kiba said, of course I am dead last why wouldn't I? Naruto said, I just thought that once you found out about the fox you would hate me, you know the whole dog, cat, dog fox thing. Kiba said, no, I don't see you as the fox but I do see that Kumo chick is a cat though, and I love to chase her for all nine of her lives if you know what I mean, as he motioned with his hands like he was playing with breast. Naruto snicker and Sasuke walked over and Naruto looked up at him and said, what's up team? Sasuke said, fight me. Naruto face went neutral and said, no. Sasuke sneered and said, what's the matter Dobe, scared. Naruto bit his lip and said, think what you want Sasuke. I have nothing to prove to you. Just then Ino and Sakura tied trying to get through the door and both screamed, made it, drawing all attention to them before both girls fell to the floor. As they tried to get up Aruka walked in and said, sorry I'm late class but I had to do some last minute paperwork since I haven't gotten a new assistant yet. Everyone please take a seat. That means you as well Sasuke, causing Sasuke to glare before returning to his seat. Naruto sighed and said, maybe I should freeze his balls off, causing Kiba to burst out laughing and Shikamaru to bit his lip and Choji to choke on his chips. Shino said, he would have to have a pair to freeze off first. At this the entire group of boys burst out laughing causing Aruka to use his big head jutsu and said, quite. Once everyone quieted down Aruka said, normally I would call you into another room to do these tests but since it's by myself I am going to do things a little different. I want everyone on the front row to line up in a row here and you will perform each jutsu I ask you to perform. If you can't perform the jutsu correctly on your first try you fail. Do you understand? All the kids including Sasuke, Sakura and Ino said, yes sensei. Aruka then had the nine up front to do the henge at the same time and then had them take turns replacing themselves with a chair and then create two bunshin. After five of the nine passed Aruka had them sit down and the second, third fourth row that had Choji, Kiba, and Hanata. After that came the final row with Shikamaru, Shino, and Naruto. Aruka had them all do the henge which Naruto did correctly in the replacement and when it got to the bunch and Naruto raised his hand and Aruka said, yes, what is it Naruto? Naruto said, if we can do more than one type of bunshin. Does it matter which ones? Aruka looked at the class and asked, does anyone who did not pass the bunshin part of the ninjutsu test know another type of bunshin? One kid raised his hand and Aruka said, all right, please come up and demonstrate the bunshin you can do. The kid walked up and did the water clone jutsu and Aruka asked, can you do the regular bunshin or a second bunshin type and if so please demonstrate. The kid did the regular bunshin and this time got it right and Aruka said, all right, you pass this part then. The only way you are allowed to use an elemental bunshin to pass is if you know another bunshin in case the element you are using is not available. In your case if you were in the desert where there is not water then your bunshin wouldn't work. Do you understand? The kid nods and Aruka passed him and Sasuke frowned and Naruto put his hands together and said, Kijbunshin no jutsu, as five Kijbunshin appeared. Aruka said, even though that is a Junin level jutsu you must still do a second type of bunshin in case you don't have the chakra reserves to do them. Naruto nods and he puts his hands together and said, Mizabunshin no jutsu, as five water clones formed before two regular bunshin appeared without smoke. Aruka said, three types of bunshin, very good Naruto, as the Mizu Bunshin burst into water and the Kij Bunshin went up in smoke however what no one noticed was the two regular Bunshin just faded away since they were just illusions. After everyone finished Aruka said, very good class. For those of you who passed you will return here tomorrow at 8am to receive your teams and sensei. For those who didn't pass you can retake the class when it starts back up in a few weeks. Good luck to all of you and have a good day, as he grabbed his clipboard with the names of who passed and left. All the kids who passed cheered while the few who didn't sulked before leaving. As the group walked out Naruto walked out along with Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba and Shino. As they made it outside Naruto sees the parents of some of the teens frowned seeing his headband and began to walk away and Naruto saw Riku and Tenten and smiles seeing them and makes his way toward them. Off to the side the Hokage was talking with Aruka and said, so he did three different types of bunshin, impressive. 
Aruka nods and both watch as Naruto heads toward Riku and Tenten when a figure appears out of thin air wearing a black cloak and red clouds and a spiral mask and shoves his fist into Naruto's stomach carrying him back as both disappeared in a blur. Tenten screamed, Naruto, as she ran toward where he had been and Riku gasped and she pulled out a silver cube and threw it on the ground and light began to appear out of it and shined into the air as an image appeared shocking everyone. Tenten turned seeing Riku pull out the cube and said, what are you doing, who was that just now and where's Naruto? Riku said, quite, Naruto has one of my video relays on him so it will take a few seconds to get a video feed on him. The further away he is the longer the delay. Here it comes, as the white static above everyone slowly became a picture and they saw what looked like a canyon and Naruto appeared sliding across the top of water before stopping on the shore while the person who attacked him stood on the other shore. Naruto looked around and looked at the person in front of him and said, Who are you and where are we? Dot why did you attack me? The Sandime seen this and said, Can you tell where he is at Riku-san? Riku said, Sorry, this is all I can do for now. The Sandime frowned and looked on and the figure who had attacked Naruto said, Hmm. I must say you look like the rest of your family send you. At this the Sandime hockage eyes widen which did not go unnoticed by Riku. Naruto said, Send you. Dot who the hell are you and why did you call me Senju? My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, making several of the parents in the courtyard as well as the gathered ninja who came seeing the disturbance at the academy to gasp and murmur to themselves. The figure chuckled and said, Namikas is the name the Sandime Hokage created to hide the identity of the youngest Senju child Minato Senju, baby brother to Sunid and Nawaki Senju. You are the last male Senju in the world and I, as he reached up to his mask and pulled it off and said, I am Uchiha Madara. The Sandime Hokage turned pale while several people looked at the Sandime. Tenten asked, is he telling the truth Hokage Sama? Is Naruto really a Senju? The Sandime frowns and said, yes though I am wondering how Madara Uchiha is still alive and looks as if he hasn't aged a day in 40 years. Naruto slowly stood up and while getting into a defensive stance and said, so you're Madara Uchiha. Is that supposed to mean something to me? Madara said, I suppose that depends. You see I didn't come here to fight. Naruto said, then why kidnap me, what are you after, as he looked around. Madara said, I wish to talk with you before all the test I have set up for you begin Senju. Naruto said, sorry, not interest, now why don't you tell me where we are and I can be on my way. The Sandime Hokage frowned and thought, be careful Naruto, Madara is on another level than you. Madara shook his head and said, because if you do not talk to me I will release another bid you on your precious village, making the people of Kanoa to gasp and Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, so the old stories about you summoning the Kyubi were true huh? I thought they were fantasy the Uchiha clan told to make people get on their knees and blow them, causing several Kanoa people to snicker. Sasuke was clenching his fist while Riku said, smart Naruto, making several people near her to look at her. Tenten asked, what smart? He's making him angry. Riku said, watch his eyes. He's stalling Madara and looking for things to use as an advantage because he knows that he's weaker than Madara. He's also keeping Madara off his game. The Sandime nods. Back in the valley Madara smiles and said, your dim-witted attempt to anger me won't work Senju. Naruto said, stop calling me that. Do you have any proof that I am related to the legendary sucker? I mean besides both being blondes. Madara said, oh I have proof you're related to Sunad, Dot and the Sandime Hokage, making Naruto eyes widen. In Kanoa several people were looking at the Sandime who face was neutral. Back with Naruto. Naruto asked, what are you smoking? I'm not related to the old man. Madara said, let me tell you a little story Senju. Back when Kanoa was founded by the Senju clan and the Uchiha clan. Naruto said, you mean when the Senju clan created Kanoa and you came in like the thieves your clan is and tried to take credit for helping to create the village. A kunai cut his cheek and Naruto stood unfazed and Madara said, keep your smart ass remarks to yourself Senju. Naruto said, sorry, everyone tells me I am a dumb ass so I guess my remarks are alright. As Madara appeared behind Naruto and he went to punch Naruto in the head and Madara hand went through Naruto body as Naruto jumped out of the water driving his fist into Madara body only to go through as well as Naruto landed on the shore and Madara appeared back where he started. In Kanoa everyone was shocked and Kiba said, what the hell happened? The Sandime said, they're testing each other. 
Madara said, impressive. You fooled my Sharingan for a brief moment. A half a second faster and you might have actually touched me. Naruto said, you're a full second behind me though old timer. Madara glared at Naruto and said, now where was I? Naruto said, great, we're both lost now since you kidnapped me and dragged my ass here. A kunai went toward Naruto arm but Naruto raised his hand and caught the kunai and said, thanks, I was getting low. Back in Kanoa, Kakashi who had arrived said, what the hell's going on here? Naruto skills are higher than all the records at the academy placed him at. Riku said, you haven't seen anything yet Sharingan Kakashi, making him look at her. Madara took a deep breath and said, if you do not let me tell my story I will kill your sister. Naruto eyes widen which did not go unnoticed by the Sandime who was looking questioningly and Naruto asked, what sister? I'm an only child. Madara said, you're trying to hide the fact you know about her but I know about her. In fact I was the one who arranged for her to be kidnapped before she was born. Naruto crossed his arms and said, fine, tell your story you seen our old gold but then tell how you supposedly had some mysterious sister kidnapped as well, as he leaned back against the wall behind him. Madara smiled and did the same against the wall behind him and said, this reminds me of the days with me and Hashirama. Now as I was saying, when Kanoa was founded by the Senju and the Uchiha clan Hashirama and I fought in this very spot we are standing now. In Kanoa the Sandime said, Kakashi, get ten teams of Anbu and lead them to the Valley of the End, rescue Naruto, go now. Kakashi nods and leaves in a swirl of leaves. Madara continued and said, anyways I summoned the Kyubi and that was when we learned that his wood abilities could control demons. I lost that day and he was named the Shodime Hockage. Dot dot. To get new clans to join Kanoa he offered all kinds of deals and one such clan was the Sarutobi clan. He took who you call the Sandime as his apprentice. Dot for 10 years Sarutobi trained under the Shodime Hokage and during that time the only child of Hashirama, his daughter became attracted to the little monkey and he as well to her and she became pregnant with Sunid. Dot dot. Due to him being the heir to his clan he wasn't allowed to marry her so she had Sunid who kept the Senju name and then a few years later she had Nawaki. Dot dot. After Nawaki was born the little monkey's clan decided he should be married and arranged a marriage with another clan that was allies with the Sarutobi clan and he was forced to marry the woman who gave him Asuma and his other son Shimba. After she died giving birth to Shimba, the little monkey who had had became the Junin sensei of his eldest child soon had tried to unite all his children but the Nadaime, Tobarama would not let this happen because his wife had already died and he refused to marry and he would not let his clan name die out but then then the second great shinobi war broke out and Tobarama died in lightning country. Naruto bit his lip and thought, could this all be true? At this several people were looking at the Sandime who face was neutral. Madara said, I'm glad you can keep your mouth shut when I took time to explain the rest of your history to you Senju. Now after his death there were two candidates for the position of Sandime Hokage. Naruto said, Danzo and the old man. Madara said, very good. Dot dot. Danzo was my apprentice like the little monkey was Hashirama. With the backing of the his former lover he was named the Sandime Hokage instead of Danzo. Dot dot. My apprentice was furious and then he learned that Lady Senju was pregnant again he became suspicious and had a paternity test done on the blood of Sunid and Nawaki and when he had that tested against the old monkey he understood why Lady Senju had voted for him to be Hokage. He became enraged and confronted the little monkey about it and they fought at which time Danzo lost one eye and arm. In an act of revenge he sold out the Nawaki team to Iwa who killed the entire team. At this people in the village gasped and the Sandime closed his eyes and clenched his fist. Naruto clenched his fist as well and Madara said, yes. Dot the Sandime fearing that Iwa was targeting the Senju decided to try and hid his son that was about to be born and created the name Namikas for him but Lady Senju passed away during childbirth and with Danzo watching him he had no choice but to put his son in the orphanage or risk a civil war in the village with Danzo claiming he slept his way to power. Naruto said, so if your story true and I'm a Senju what does this have to deal with this mysterious sister and why did you send the Kyubi to attack Kanoa? Dot and how the hell are you still alive? Shouldn't you be in some old folks home for the senile? Madara ignored the remark and said, if you must really know I took the Magna Sharingan from my little brother and it gave me eternal youth. Naruto said, that's the Sharingan the secret room in the Uchiha temple talks about right. Madara looked surprised and said, you know of that room. Naruto said, let me see if I remember it right, 
To gain the Magnaku Sharingan a Sharingan user must kill someone they care for. Madara said, yes, for most of the Uchiha clan we kill our best friends to get it. For my brother he killed our mother and I killed our father. In Kanoa a lot of people were wide-eyed and looking at Sasuke as his fan club just took a huge hit. Naruto said, yeah, my old Anbu guard took me there to hide on my seventh birthday when the villagers blew up my apartment. In Kanoa the teens looked at the adults with anger while the adults looked down in shame. Madara said, yes, Atachi is too kind-hearted. It was why I actually doubted he would follow his orders and kill the Uchiha clan. Naruto blinked and said, what orders? Madara said, that is one of the tests I have set up for you Senju. You see, I had my apprentice Danzo talk the head of the Uchiha clan into planning a coup d'etat to kill the council and the Hokage and at the same time I had it where he had the Hokage place Atachi as a spy in the Uchiha clan because of growing hostilities between the Uchiha clan and Kanoa. Itachi reported back to the Hokage and the elders and with the stolen Sharingan I Danzo took he had the elders help him order Itachi to kill the Uchiha clan to save Kanoa. Itachi only agreed to do it so he could save his little brother because he loves him. I knew this which is why I had Danzo have Itachi placed in the situation he was in. Right now Itachi is in my Akatsuki organization as a secret spy for Kanoa reporting on what we are planning with capturing all the Biju and Jinchuriki and giving the reports to Jiraiya. Itachi also accepted his fate to let Sasuke kill him when the time is right but because of the way Danzo talked the council into having the village treat Sasuke like he's Kami gift to them Sasuke has grown conceited and will eventually betray Kanoa at which time you will have to fight him. Naruto said, me. Dot why me? Madara said, because the dead last at the academy and the rookie of the year are always paired up. With Mizuki being bribed by Orokimaru who also worked for me into making sure you fail and Sasuke succeeds you both would be put on the same team and like most teams you both will bond and you will become Sasuke best friend and in order for him to get his revenge on Itachi he will have to kill you to gain the Magnaku. He's one of the tests I set up for you. If Sasuke fails with Itachi slowly going blind he will have no choice but to take Sasuke eyes and when he does he will become like me, eternal young and that will provide me with the same entertainment I hope to get from you. Naruto clenched his fist and said, entertainment. You're treating people like they're nothing but pawns to you. Madara said, that's what being a leader is all about. It's what I did in the hidden mist. I created ninja villages made up of only bloodline users and had them fight wars against each other making the people hate bloodlines while I sat back and watched all the fun. In fact that was how your mother got to Kanoa in the first place. I personally destroyed Whirlpool and I was the one who let your mother, Uncle and the other woman leave Whirlpool alive and those fools thought that they actually escaped because of their skills. I had Danzo slip information to Minato who greeted those three Uzumaki and brought them to Kanoa and liked I planned both women fell in love with Minato and had a child and since one had an ice bloodline which resulted in you and one had a wind bloodline like your sister I had your sister kidnapped by the now Yondime Kazekage. I had Sasori make a deal with the Yondaim who was head of village security at the time to kidnap your sister mother in exchange for Sasori assassinating the Sandaim Kazekage and once that happened Chio, Sasori grandmother and elder of Suna would have the head of security take over as the new Kazekage also your sister would have a better chance to learn to use her wind bloodline to make her a more interesting pawn for me to play with. It was also me who had Sasori send the idea to Chio to seal Shukaku in the Yondaim's youngest son. Naruto who fist were clenched said, tell me, what was it like, catching Madara attention. Madara asked, what was what like. Naruto said, to be weak and vulnerable and have your baby brother offer his eye to you out of pity because my great grandfather kicked your ass so many times you cried until you were blind. Boo hoo, boo hoo, poor poor Uchiha, as he made a crying motion. Madara said, shut it boy. Naruto said, oh, it's boy now. Dot of the Senju showing our superiority to the Uchiha clan again that you feel threatened. Madara unleashed some ki and said, silence oral. Naruto got down on one knee and said, look, are you so scared of me you need a handicapped little Madachan. Is this what your little brother was like when he gave you his eye? Madara screamed, shut the hell up Senju before I kill you. Naruto said, look, I only need one hand to beat you, as he put the other hand behind his back. Madara screamed and charged at Naruto and Naruto charged at him and as Madara got closer to Naruto and Naruto came out of the water with a raisin shuriken formed and Madara phased out letting the attack go through him.
as he destroyed the Kijbunshan and charged at the real Naruto who still had one arm drawn back and he slipped through Madara body who reappeared behind Naruto with a kunai out ready to stab it in the back of Naruto head when the hand that was behind Naruto back fired the thrust cannon that had been charging at Madara who was so angry didn't register the attack since he believed the Raisin Shuriken Kijbunshan was the build up and his Sharingan did not have time to react as the beam separated his lower half of his body. This was the site the Ten Anbu teams and Kakashi arrived to as the beam destroyed the wall behind them but Naruto was thrust forward into the wall as well. Kakashi landed next to Naruto and frowned as he said, Medic. Several teams landed by Madara who body was dead and Neko said, what the hell was that? Naruto coughed as blood came out of his mouth and said, 80% of my chakra released at one time. Kakashi said, rest Naruto, dot you earned it. Naruto nods as a medic placed his hand on Naruto head and Naruto passed out. The medic said, we need to get him back to Kanoa and fast. He's got several broke ribs and I don't know what it is but part of his bones in his arm have been replaced with some kind of metal along with this, as he showed the power core. Kakashi said, I'll take him, I want five teams to secure Madara body and make sure he's dead and see if you can figure out what happened here. The rest of you have guard detail on Naruto here. Let's go, as he picked up Naruto and began running up the wall and then toward Kanoa. In Kanoa everyone was stunned and Tenten said, he, he did it, he won. Riku said, yes but he's also heavily damaged. The thrust cannon was supposed to help him increase speed to the speed of sound when he flies not be used as a weapon like that. He's got several broke ribs and the power core being damaged. Have your dad melt me a 8 inch solid steel 2 inch plate with smooth edges the size of the power core. I'm going to have to repair that or he'll die of chakra overload. Tenton said, um, right, I'll tell dad, as she jumped away. The Sandime said, what was that my grandson used? Riku said, one of my inventions. I came up with a way to purify the Kyubi chakra and kill it faster while making it safer for Naruto but the invention has been damaged. I got a read out from it and I need to fix it. The Sandime frowned and said, you and I are having a long talk after this Riku-san. Riku said, just be happy that me helping my godson just save his life unlike the care you gave him. Now if you will excuse me I got work to do, as she grabbed the holo projector and left. A little girl said, mommy, is that blonde boy still a bad person? At this the verbal cat fight began. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.